This episode is brought to you by Global X. Since 2008, Global X ETFs has been committed to empowering investors with unexplored intelligent solutions. Global X specializes in exchange traded funds that offer exposure to the artificial intelligence ecosystem, including themes like data centers, robotics, semiconductors, and cloud computing. To learn more about Global X's entire suite of ETFs, from covered calls, fixed income, emerging markets, and more, visit globalxetfs.com. Today on CityCast Madison. It's Thursday, so of course we're dishing on Madison's food seat. It's here. There's officially a fall chill in the air, and that means it's high time to fire up our ovens, grab our spices, and bake some warming treats. Or for those who don't cook, go support Madison bakers selling their beloved seasonal goods. Our friend and food editor at the Cap Times, Lindsay Christians, has already started her ritual fall baking and done some research on the best local spots to get baked goodies. We sat down with Lindsay to get her top recipes and recommendations. It's Thursday, October 24th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Lindsay, welcome back. Oh my gosh, thank you. It is wonderful to be back. And it is wonderful to have you in, um, I'm going to say mine, is it our favorite season? What's your favorite season? 100% fall. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is it's the best season. It's it's like proper now. It's sweater weather. Are you excited about this moment that we're in? I love it. I've been drinking like tea all day. I am back on my baking business. Like I just, I get so into it and I can't, I feel like I can't really run the oven all summer. So it's like kind of fun to return to my kitchen. Oh, that's so true. And when we're thinking about fall, it's like the big things coming to mind are like warm vanilla, bright orange pumpkins, different colored pumpkins, apples, you know, so it's the time for baking. And I feel like if folks don't already know, you don't only write about food, you like get into it. You're a baker, you are a cooker. So we want to talk to you about like, what are you whipping up this season recipe wise? Oh my gosh, thank you. So I, I want to just start by saying that I want this episode to be for you if you want to bake. And I want this episode to be for you if you do not want to bake and you want somebody else to bake for you and you want to yes. go get it, right? Yes, yes. We're getting to both. <laughs> yes. So we, we've we got you. If you are like not into baking, that is totally fine. Also, let me know. I'll drop off some baked things. Um, I always need more people to eat my stuff. Um, but I kind of went two directions the start of this fall baking season. I went savory first and I was making these kale cheddar cheese scones Ooh. with pumpkin seeds on top. Oh, yes. Really delicious. <laughs> also like using up the last of my CSA veggies. Um, I love scones that have things in them like butternut squash or carrot, you know, anything that's like a fall flavor. The Madison sourdough for many years made these incredible cranberry scones that had whole cranberries in them. I think mm. they still do. I haven't checked very recently, but I would bet they still do. And there it's like an orange cranberry scone, but it's got fresh whole cranberry in it. Mm, so Wisconsin. Yes. But I made these beautiful kale cheddar scones. And the pro tip that I want to share with folks is that if you don't want 12 scones that you then have to find homes for that are not your face, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can freeze them like on a piece of parchment paper in a in the freezer on a tray. And then when they're frozen enough, you can just dump all of those scones into a Ziploc bag, seal it up. And then when you, you can bake them off one at a time. Mm. That's really smart. I want to yeah. get more into freezing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Between like 15 and 20 minutes, it's usually like 350, 375 on your oven. But then you can have like a lovely fresh scone that morning because anybody who's worked at a coffee shop knows that scones don't actually last <laughs> that long. The day old scones are a little dry. So if you don't want to have to get rid of all of the scones that you just made really quickly, a great way of having little scones for yourself is freezing them. OK. And they preserve that that freshness. Yeah, well, because they're nice and warm in the morning. And also it feels like you got yourself a little baked treat without leaving your house. Yes, honestly, <laughs> if you're trying to save money, too. I mean, it's it's nice when you have your own love and care in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
So I did that, and then I immediately made an apple cake. I make apple cakes every year. I make a lot of apple cake. So I was trying apple to cake. remember. Yeah, apple cake. So like Nigella Lawson in How to Be a Domestic Goddess, which I think came out in like the year 2000. Uh, I was very young when I got it. And I made this apple cake in her book with walnut oil and like whole walnuts. And there's either rum or brandy in it. There's some kind of booze. And I was I saw not, that coming. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was not <laughs> the warming. Yeah. I was at drinking at the time because I think I might have even been too young. But like I loved that. Like I was like, OK, I have alcohol that I can like put in this cake that had walnut oil in it. I've made it with olive oil, too, and it's excellent. But I've made them with like Dory Greenspan has one with melted butter in an apple cake. I've made it with like a vegetable or canola oil. Smitten Kitchens has like a canola oil base. But the one I just made is from a new cookbook from Milk Street Kitchen, um, which is based out on the East Coast. It's Christopher Kimball's thing after he left America's Test Kitchen in, like, flames. <laughs> <laughs> he, he messed it up. It was very he, controversial, he his departure. Okay. <laughs> I, I get the sense that, like, he's maybe not a fun hang. Yeah. Hey, you know, chefs, knock that off. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Try harder to be a good person. <laughs> he's, he's He's got a good team with him, and I feel like he maybe does give them some leeway. But this baking book is solid. The kale scones came out of that. And then I made a Greek apple cake called Melopida, which has Greek yogurt in it and cinnamon. And it was absolutely delicious. I just like the name to start with. Like yeah. Melopida. Mm. <laughs> but you start by making like this apple cider glaze with a cup of apple cider and some orange peel and a little bit of sugar and you reduce it down and then you glaze the cake with that when you're done. Uh, ah! It's really We're good. in trouble. <laughs> yeah. We are in trouble. We are in danger. <laughs> I brought it into so the good. office and like all the journalists were like, ooh, cake. <laughs> I was yeah. like, this is great. And it's not just any cake. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So you've got the savory, you've got your apple cake. Those are both like so warming and lovely to have mm -hmm. in your space. I feel like for some folks, it might be like a little intimidating to know where to start. So I'm using this line because someone wrote it for me and it's good. If someone is looking to tip their toes into the metaphorical batter this fall, <laughs> where should they start? Like, um, I feel like I know that you've got a, these great cookbooks. I partially know because you're holding them up <laughs> right now. I have a whole stack. I didn't need to prep for this because this is just how I live, but I did prep because I'm excited. This is how I roll, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite new books for beginning bakers is called Snacking Cakes by Yossi Arefi, A-R-E-F-I. Literally snacking cakes. These are like your, your banana breads, your zucchini breads, the things that like the quick things that you would make even maybe as a kid. Like, oh, we can do muffins. These are all like that. They're super accessible. So this would be really fun as like a new one to do. It came out a couple of years ago, maybe. I think she even has another one out now that's like snacking bakes or something. Are you inflicted with the same thing? I'm guessing no, but uh, just like keeping bananas all the time for <laughs> possibly using them. <laughs> I'm just like still in that phase of like, I'm going to make banana bread and it doesn't happen. <laughs> freezer. freezer. Freezer, freezer. Yes. It works. Yes. If, if you don't care about them getting real brown and stuff and you're going to just use them in a... Or you can peel them. Is this a, a bad recommendation? Peel them first. Oh, so I it's don't not, know. Yeah, that's what my that's what my grandma did, like for I her like smoothies. That. Yeah, because then like when you try and peel it and when it's frozen, it's just like this is a pain, like taking yeah. off in the strings and stuff like that. But I don't even follow my own advice. But <laughs> <laughs> the best banana bread actually uh, that I made it's almost more like a banana cake. It was a brown butter banana cake, and it comes from Molly Boz. I brought it into the office. God, a year ago, maybe. And people went nuts for it. But it has like five bananas in it. I am not a regular banana eater. So I only buy them if I'm going to bake with them. And then I wait <laughs> until they're ready. <laughs> I, I want to shout out one more cookbook. One, So Dory Greenspan, she has the most, not just baking recipes, but also cooking. Like any, if you're just like going to cook delicious, comforting fall food. Dory Greenspan has got you. She's she's got one that's sort of in my in my kitchen, in my French kitchen. But baking with Dory is excellent. And the the thing with her recipes is that they are flavor combinations that are just sometimes they're just like a little bit unexpected. 
where there'll be a little bit of rye flour in something, or there'll be like a nut combination you didn't expect. But she's got the classics too. So if you're, you're like, you know what? I just want to make some chocolate chip cookies. I just want to make a really good sugar cookie. Dory Greenspan. Like get her cookbook, get her baking books, because if you go to all recipes, you never know. <laughs> you never know. All recipes will do you dirty. Yes. But Dory Greenspan never will. And she has tested her recipes a million times. She's she's very good at developing recipes and making them making sure that she gives you all the information you need so that they work. That's so exciting. Yeah. I was thinking just before talking to you this morning, I was driving through this beautiful fall weather thinking, God, I want some snickerdoodle cookies. <laughs> yeah. She has simple, beautiful simple. snickerdoodle recipes. Yes. Yeah. She has a cookie in there called the World Peace Cookies. They're also called Corova. As a side note, they have them at Batch in Madison. So if you okay. just want to try one first, get hooked, and then bake them yourself, it's like a dark chocolate shortbread. Mm. And it's beautiful. Like, it's mm. so, so good. And I make it them brings world holidays. peace? Yeah. Well, she's she's <laughs> published them now in like three of her books because people are just, they love them so much. And so she's constantly like playing a little bit with the recipe. But if you search Corova, K-O-R-O-V-A, or World Peace Cookies, Dory Greenspan, the recipe's everywhere on the internet. Like, you don't have to buy the book. But like, it's such a good classic recipe. It's so delicious. I make them every year. But she's one, again, who will just, she will take care of you if you're just getting started with baking. It's Crocktober, the official celebration of Crocs fans like you. So whether you like to rock your classic clogs, get cozy and fuss lined personalize with your favorite gibbets charms, or even, you know, dress up like a clog for Halloween, it's time to tell your story and share your style. Join the Crocktober celebration with Crocs fans around the world. Go to crocs.com to discover the range of shoes and find a pair that's iconic like you. Crocs, celebrating you all month long. Oh, it's such a clutch off-season pickup, Dave. I was worried we'd bring back the same team. I meant those blackout motorized shades. Blinds.com made it crazy affordable to replace our old blinds. Hard to install? No, it's easy. I installed these and then got some from my mom. She talked to a design consultant for free and scheduled a professional measure and install. Hall of Fame son. They're the number one online retailer of custom window coverings in the world. Blinds.com is the go. Shop Blinds.com right now and get up to 45% off select styles. Rules and restrictions may apply. And so you got these cookbooks, you have the word, you're not going to allrecipes.com unless you just absolutely want to. So then what are the must-haves in your pantry when it comes to fall baking? Sure. So we talked about this like a year ago, but I always have apples. I got a million apples all the time. I went to, I think, five orchards last year for yes. that project. I only Thank went you. to a couple this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but go back and listen. They're all still open. Um, I always have a mix of apples. So I have like tart, crisp apples that will hold their shape. Um, those are really important. Other things I always want to have in my pantry that like it, as soon as they run out, I go get more currants. I love like a dried currant. Um, any kind of like dried fruit. So dried cranberries, dried currants, like dried cranberries in a chocolate chip cookie are incredible. They're really good. So adding something like that, that's just like good all the time. I usually will start to have citrus around this time too. It's a little early for citrus, right? It's a winter fruit, but I love like the glaze I just made for that cake had orange peel in it. So the, some of those citrus flavors are starting to come in a little bit. The big thing that I've been playing with more recently, and the cookbook that I would shout out around this is actually called Mother Grains by Roxana Jolipad, is different kinds of flour. So Meadowlark Organics makes beautiful like rye flour, bread flour, pastry flour. They also do an all-purpose mix. Baking with local flour is a little bit more challenging or can be, especially if you're working with things that have a rise to them. Because when you're talking about yeast and rising, the ratios are really important. It's very mathy, and I'm not a really mathy person or sciencey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that can get a little tricky. So I really like using what I've been doing a lot. And this is a little bit because my mother too, but like I'll do three quarters of the flour in the recipe as an all purpose flour, and then I'll do one quarter spelt flour. Okay. Um, which so is a doing very, a little bit of a mix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's very it's it's kind of a like slightly softer, slightly sweeter flour. Rye is going to give you that nuttiness, that graininess. But if you're just like, no, 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 I'm just going to do this whole recipe with whole wheat flour, which I have done before. 
that's when you shoot yourself in the foot. Like, like you're like, why are my cookies so? I've been flat there too. Weird? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna be healthy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, yep, I yeah. sure did. <laughs> and like, these are maybe not went, edible. <laughs> whole hog. I keep hearing that expression. I went whole hog. I went whole hog. Yeah. <laughs> On the wheat. <laughs> yeah. So I think just having some, having like some rye flour, some spelt flour, some of these different kinds of fun. Flowers in your in your freezer is usually where I keep them. Back to the freezer. Oh, to keep them nice and interesting. To keep them nice, but also uh, I think I'm not alone. Anybody who's baked for a long time like has just left their flour a little bit too long. And um, there are basically there's little bugs that live in flour <laughs> and that if you leave it forever, they will hatch. And they don't hurt you, but they're gross and they're weird. And they don't happen if you put your flour in the freezer. This is the news you can use. Yeah. For the non-bakers. No, I'm thankful. I mean, I hate it. And I, it's human, it's life. It means that it was alive and it was from the earth. So I want to talk about uh, pies. And I also, I know we talked about batch. Y'all who are listening are like, I don't want to bake. I want to know where to get our baked goods. You know that we're out here buying baked goods from people around here. Um, But before we we turn to that, I want to talk quickly about, I don't want to even quickly. I just want to talk about pies Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I know you know pies. And I understand you think people should actually make a galette and not a pie. It feels like that might be heresy in the fall. Then again, I am a galette girl. So can you explain yourself on that one? The dough is basically the same. If you can make a pie dough, you can make a galette dough. They're basically the same. My favorite is actually a Susie Middleton recipe that comes together in the food processor like a dream. Super easy. Allison Roman has a good pie crust recipe. Um, Claire Savitz obviously does. Claire Savitz is a baking goddess. She knows. But the thing with a galette is it doesn't have to be pretty, right? You're not trimming. I remember like making pies with my grandma. We like to trim all the sides and you're crimping it and making it all beautiful. My friend Gwen does these gorgeous like apple pies and other fruit pies and she like decorates the top. I am not a good decorator. If you are a great decorator, amazing. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. It's not me. (laughs) The food's going to taste good and it's going to look kind of fugly. So I'm going with a galette that's like, you could fold over the sides. You brush it with a little bit of egg wash, maybe some sesame seeds on there if you're doing a little sesame moment. Like you can sprinkle like a turbinado or demerara sugar on the edges too of the galette and give it a little bit of zhuzh if you want it to look nice. But the thing is with a pie, oftentimes you're blind baking that crust. So you're doing it twice. With a galette, you don't have to. It all bakes at once. You're, never, you're not par baking that. They're faster. They're rustic. They taste just as good. Like, just as good. Fabulous. I just got pears, and I'm going to do a pear. My grandma had a pear tree, and I just got some beautiful pears from the Vitruvian farm store. And I'm like, okay, we're doing pear galette. Like, that'll be beautiful. We're getting great call-outs, Meadowlark. We've got Vitruvian farms. This is wonderful. Yeah. (laughs) And it's great to think about, you know, our family recipes um, and our our matriarchs and, you know, anyone who is a cooker uh, in our family. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, galettes, I honestly, like, I'm kind of addicted to Madison sourdoughs. Um, <laughs> they're so good. <laughs> and I feel like kind of um like a galette cookie monster. It's not a cookie, but I eat it all. I'm just like, I there's this isn't going anywhere. And honestly, in terms of beauty, it might not have that precision, but it's got like a beautiful organic you know, like it's kind of nice. Like straight lines don't exist in nature. Okay, right? um, talking about the organic architecture movement. Okay, um, I'm pro galette. <laughs> We're it's auth- it's authentic. It feels like it feels like something that someone's hands made. Yes, you know. And I love that. And speaking of stuff that someone's hands made, if you don't want your own hands to make it. Where, you know, where should we be going? Uh, I have an idea of where you're going to say first. Um, and if you don't, we're going to get to it because it's it's my spot that I'm just like kind of addicted to. Where What what kind of place around town do you recommend for getting some really good fall baking? So this, I, I kind of knew we were going to be talking about this today. And so in preparation, I reached out to a bunch of people and I was like, what are you doing right now? Like, what's good? Because I, I have my bakeries. I'm an East Side girl. Like, 
I have the places that I go, but I don't, I don't always make it all the way around town. So I just, I was like checking in with folks, like, what are you making? Marie Young at Far Breton up on the north side is doing an apple butter cinnamon roll. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Far She's Breton. got like a new expanded cafe there now. Like there's yes. like places you can sit inside. Yes. And we have to shout it out. It's so cute. And they have like vintage lamps in there. It's very Frenchy, which is just my vibe. Yeah. <laughs> So that's really cool. I mean, obviously, she does those gorgeous croissants and croissant noir, which is like the chocolate croissant, which are incredible. And it's hard for me to not get those. But I got hooked on the Queen Amon. Oh, my God. The Queen Amon is so good. And I will never. Claire Saffitz, in her book, Dessert Person, has a how-to, how to make a Queen Amon. It's like three pages of photos. (laughs) Like, it. I, I should show it to you. I mean, I wish listeners you could see this. It's it's so detailed because it's hard. Yeah. Right? Then you don't have to go through that labor and like you can just go pick it up at Far Breton's over um on Fordham. Yeah. yeah. And Marie's good at it. She knows she's how. So good. They're Let so her good. do it. <laughs> uh, I like bring them to my family and they're like <laughs> last time they were just visiting and we I finally I had already been, but to pay all I with my family eating. And they're like, Oh, you went did you not bring us any of the <laughs> the baked goods from Far That's Breton? Really funny. And I'm like, We're out to eat. <laughs> you have other options right now. Yeah. Also on the north side, B- Bloom Bake Shop has a location uh, on North mm. Street, right? As well mm-hmm. as on Monroe Street. I reached out to Anne Marie and I said, what are you doing? And she said, and I'm just going to read this, apple tarts, apple Danish, pumpkin rum layer cakes. Uh, her business partner and husband, Mark, has been doing apple cinnamon rolls on Sundays. Which sounds amazing. She's doing the ginger molasses cookies, which I think are like all season, like all cold weather ginger molasses, chai glazed donuts. Obviously, Bloom also does sweet potato donuts, which I think are fall coated and pumpkin bars. I love a pumpkin bar. Like we are in the Midwest. We like bars. This is (laughs) how we do. We like our bars here. We do. We like a bar. Um, And then at Lalonde, which is on Monroe Street, they're doing this apple dessert. It's a whole roasted Cox Orange Pippin from Warren Orchard, which is about mm, an hour south of here-ish. What's a Pippin? So Cox Orange Pippin, it's a little, like, like a smaller apple. It has that like, oh, there's a word for it. It's got that like stippling like little dots on the, on. It, it's not a, be- I, don't think, I don't think it's a very beautiful apple. It's okay. not gorgeous. <laughs> it's but, organic. Yeah, but it has this kind of like wine-like flavor. It's very complex. And they do that with a rice pudding, which is kind of fun. Mm. That's infused with lemon peel pernod, which is like an absinthe anise flavor, like a fennel anise flavor, and cinnamon. And then they garnish it with candied pecans that they make there. I have to say Lalonde is hands down one of my favorite places yeah. and their desserts slap. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry really... I'm using so much slang, but <laughs> I I'm know. just in it. I'm feeling it. <laughs> uh, it's that looks that that sounded really, really good. Yeah. Um, for galettes, if you don't want to make them, they have them at Pasture and Plenty made by Tarte. I think Tarte also might be the co-op, but that's a local company that is out of the PNP make shop and they do lovely fruit galettes. I like always having one in my freezer. Just because they freeze so easily. And then you have, if you have people over, at, you know, randomly or you just need a dessert for yourself, it's always there for you. A little frozen Colette. And the frozen local out in Spring Green, I'm going to be out in Spring Green this weekend. They do beautiful fruit galettes that are like from their own farm, mm. which is very cool. Yes. Um, so that's really cute. Obviously, Batch Bakehouse, I mentioned them before. Yeah. They do this apple cake that's called Lauren's Mom's Apple Cake. And I called before this recording to find out what the secret was to that apple cake. And it's cream cheese in the cake batter. Oh, yes. <laughs> right? Dairy. <laughs> I never, I don't think I ever would have guessed that. Like, I just made an apple cake with yogurt. And that seemed totally, like, of course, like you would do. But I, I don't know why, but there's cream cheese in oh that my cake batter. And they're doing like a pumpkin walnut loaf, little frosted pumpkin cookies, which I have just a soft spot in my heart for. I love a sugar cookie. And they're doing pumpkin bars again there too with cream cheese frosting. Oh, I'm in heaven. (laughs) (laughs) If you are doing the orchard thing, I was trying to think of places that have apple cider donuts. And like most of them do, I would say La Pesex usually does uh, up north of Madison. But I really loved for like one of my favorite orchards that I visited last year for the Roundup was Appleberry Farm, 
which is to the west of town. It's dog friendly. They were like, they had a chocolate shop there. They had like chocolate shop ice cream there. In addition to like their whole room full of apples, they have pick your own apples or they, I don't know if they still do at this point, but you know, they tons of apples and they have apple cider donuts and it's just lovely. And that's Ugh, like one of the fall. places I would visit for like fall. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and then I want to mention the Rise and Shine muffins at Reverie Baking Co. on the east side are like my new nothing muffin. I was obsessed with nothing muffins at the co-op for years because it's like, it's just all like whole grains and carrot and coconut and like nuts Health and, and love and, yeah. and tasties. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like everything free. They're like gluten-free and sugar-free and blah, 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 blah. But I was like, but I still like this. Uh, incredibly. But the Rise and Shine muffins at Reverie are, they're kind of like a morning glory muffin if you've ever had that. I haven't. Or if I have, I don't know. I didn't know its name. <laughs> it's like carrots and raisins and like those kinds of like yeah. your mom's baking for you as a kid and she doesn't want to put too much sugar in it, you know? <laughs> yeah, just like, <laughs> thanks, yeah. mom, but it actually is good. <laughs> but they're good. And the, the thing about like a muffin like that is that you have it in the morning and it actually kind of makes you feel a little bit more full and you feel good and you don't crash from the sugar. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I do too. It's so wholesome. This conversation has got me like, Lindsay, we got to go. We got to go eat. (laughs) We got to go eat these things and bake these things. Lindsay, thank you so much for bringing us the fall baked goods scene and your, your favorite recipes and what you're working on. It's been really fun. Thank you so much. That's Lindsay Christians, food editor at the Cap Times. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with your favorite sweet tooth or fall girly or all of the above. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Ciao.